Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the MDL Land Finals. It's the Grand Final, best of five between Newbie and Evil Geniuses. I'm Odie Pixel, I'm joined by Draskal. Thank you very much for hanging around. It looks like they gave the players a little bit of a break before we get stuck into game three. Could potentially be the last one of the series if EG are able to continue their, their momentum at the moment. Of course, 2 0 up in this Grand Final. I will see if Newbie able to pull a stop to it and are able to give us uh, uh, at least, well, four games if they can take EG down this matchup. But, Andy, we have it here. Newbie, they've got to do something different. It's just not working what they're trying. 10 seconds remaining. 5 seconds remaining. Drow Ranger. Radiant Team Pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Well, if that's going to be the case, we'll see uh, what they get instead. And instead, they'll get the Warlock. So, a early pickup. Obviously, something that we saw early in the series, and it worked out. Uh, did, of course, have the combination of Universe Void as well, which is still in the pool. I mean, you're picking up the Warlock now. It's very early on, Andy. I mean, newbie have have ways to, to, to pick against it. And also, are you then worried, if you're newbie, about Universe getting the Void? And do you think that we might see them take it away from them? Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Luna. Radiant team, Baron. Uh, absolutely nothing to differ at, at the moment. We'll see if that changes now in this this phase of bans. E.g., seen the SD, they've seen the Luna. Uh, I'm trying to think. What what else do you feel at the just the really strong pick? I mean, Invoker obviously comes to mind. It didn't win them the game before newbie, but we know that SC can have good performances on it. Do you think E.G. will just let it through again? I mean, they're banning the Naga. Do you think they're more more likely to ban something else? Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team, ban. Ten seconds. And of course, that, yeah, that Storm Spirit ban. I think that's that's totally warranted. They did it in the game one. They didn't do it in game two. It was, certainly was a lot more painful for them when Sumail was able to get his hands on the storm. So they're not going to allow it to happen in game three. And uh, yeah, as we're talking about this ban from EG, so let's see what they are. I'm the most afraid of newbie getting their hands upon. I mean, obviously we talked about uh, to the void and the invoker in the mix. Uh, I mean, axe as well. Do you feel there's a team that? That wants to take the axe this matchup. I believe that is what Newbie did do after the uh, the opening with Shadow Demon in game one. Yeah. Yeah. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. And what else do you want to take away from this drow strap? 
If a newbie. I, I mean, as we're saying, are you worried about those initiators like the Axe in the Void? Or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Absolutely understandable. Yeah. yeah. You, you, I mean, uh, the, the thing is, though, the axe is still there, isn't it? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, there's... And another one, of course, we, we know he said in the past he doesn't really like to play it, but Darkseer would be tasty. But there's the one you mentioned. That pickup. I mean, with that pickup, are we kind of guaranteed that... I mean, is that going to be universal? Is there a chance Samael might play the bat in the mid? Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. A newbie now. Axe is there. Invokers there. Heroes that they've done prove it before. They're actually going to take the tide for themselves, as you mentioned, just both teams. Wanting that big initiator and, and they'll get the tide immediately though, EG. Picking up the uh, the vengeful spirit. Bit of an O back to, to the times with PPD. One of his heroes that he'd, he'd love to draw for the side. But EG bringing it back here in game three. And uh, obviously adding to the auras. You know, you mentioned them maybe wanting to look for something uh, that's going to add to the push in that sense. And also, of course, just, just kind of stopping Newbie from any chance of getting it. Just in case they were going to look for some more counters to the Batrider. But Venge, yeah. Are you, are you liking it here? Reserve time. Mirana. Radiant team, ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. And in terms of remaining. options left for Samao, that can kind of work with this Drow lineup. I mean, well, they they, they are going to ban out the event. We talked about this earlier. That they, they do feel that there's a potential that, as you said, they can run that Marana in the roaming position as a secondary support. So banning out Invoker from SC. But as you said, the, the draft and newbie can go both ways. Uh, that uh, Marana could very well be SC's heroes as well. So newbie now, final ban. You're looking towards the mail. Well, well, I mean, I I kind of like to see a Samael puck. I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know if this is the draft, but puck something that's going to allow for chaotic. That was usually the hero, right? Whenever you yeah. had the the drow and the vengeful spirit, but they're they're thinking it's going to be more of a farming capacity. I think death profit's also a possibility here for EG. I think it's just an insane amount of push. It's also a safe form of push, whereas pop the exorcism and newbie pretty much has to make the decision like right then and there. It's like, okay, do we fight or do we not fight? Because if you don't fight, you pretty much sack the tower. And I think you kind of want that decisive team fight hero. But yeah, there's there's still a few options left. I think Dusa was also a fairly good ban because that's an ultra late game hero that wouldn't really care about Shadow Demon and Luna Illusions or anything like that. And it wouldn't allow Newbie to delay the game and be able to gain some kind of advantage. Because if you look at their lineup, it's a lot of defensive heroes, right? Like Tidehunter and Shadow Demon. Yes. Those, those two pretty much are really good at delaying and, and getting into a later stage in the game. They need to make sure that they can actually win at that point. Because otherwise, picking heroes doesn't make any sense. So, do you think like um, Newbie could do something similar to game one and get the, the leaners, the support combo, and, and uh, obviously have Marana in the mid? Oh yeah, obviously. They can, they can definitely do that. And it does look like Ooh. that's going to be a mid run. So. The Bounty Hunter is the last pick up here for the side of Newbie. And, I mean, Bats, it's a vision hero. And I think that that's something, too, that you always want to look towards when you're playing against stuff like Bat. 
is you need a hero that's going to give you some kind of information. You know, a lot of times we see, like, Night Stalkers, uh, Slark, save the flame pick because of Night Vision. No, also grants Night Vision, but Slark obviously can tell the, the last. So those are usually the heroes that you see to counter it. But Bounty Hunter functions in a, in a similar fashion, so it's it's definitely a solid pick. One of the heroes that's kind of been forgotten this series, um, Morph. I mean, is there any way that EG could slip that into their lineup? Um, was it? Morph. I guess they could, like, do lane if they wanted to be more and dual lane get hard for the bounty to do anything in the early game i mean it's, it's always possible but i i think it's pretty low likelihood well let's see EG. just don't pick him pugna we've seen how that goes that that, that <laughs> ain't out, great pugna, let's do it let's, let's rock and roll i still like um i like dp but i don't know if they're gonna pick it i guess dp is one of those heroes that is it kind of hard for a bounty to gank? As soon as he reveals, you just kind of siphon and walk off? Um, I think you could probably kill a DP in this game if the supports are out of position. But, yeah. I mean, Lai and, and Crit have been playing very well this series, so I, I would expect it to be fairly safe. They're thinking about it, so we'll see what happens. Nice it the is puck. the puck! Okay. Oh yeah! I said I wanted to see it. We're gonna get it. The, I mean, the puck in itself, and it's actually gonna be Arteezy is it going to be our TZ battle? Is it going to be our TZ battle? I mean, there's, there's some male some at the moment on the Drow Ranger. They and it is going to be our TZ some... puck. Our tall All right. puck. All right. Unless they do swap it up. I mean, he still does have that video on his Twitch, right? The one where he buys uh, they back swapped it. They swapped it. Okay. They swapped it. it We're not getting our TZ puck. I would have loved to see that, but no, it's a male puck. I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, they're going for the more aggressive option. DP would have been more like siege oriented in team fight. This is the I want a lot of catch and I'm going to just kill you basically and then push ours, which is still obviously very good. All right, well here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Game three between Evil Geniuses and Newbie. We'll see if they're able to pull it through here, EG, and get themselves the clean sweep, or if Newbie can turn it around. I mean, in terms of draft overall, have Newbie got? a better shot on paper than they had in the first two games with this lineup or, or do you feel that there's not really that much difference in the picks it's just all going to be down to the play i mean a, a majority of it's going to be down to the play, no question i think that newbie are going to be a bit pressured like this bounty hunter has to do a lot i think whenever you have bounty on your team his early game is going to be really important especially when you're playing against a lineup of eg where you know they're going to be pressuring towers and know they're going to be pushing the timing of EG's lineup is very fast, so quick tempo outside of EG, whereas we want to play a more slow, methodical game. But they also have a fairly good team fight as well. I think this one's going to be uh, going to be a tough one, I think, though, for newbie. I know. Of course, being here is in the early stages. How much this uh, bouncy Kaka is able to do across the map? Because obviously, with that puck pickup from Samael, that, that's you know, a very hard area to gank unless he's out of position with. You know, using the orb aggressively, um, and obviously looking elsewhere, you know, the, the tri lane that's going to be kind of hard to break. So uh, they they can punch back hard. Right, here we have it, as the bell tolls, newbie will have to secure themselves top room. The Bottom room will be secured by Samel, no problem whatsoever. So yeah, laning stage. Who's going to have the easiest time in the laning stage? You feel? Oh, eg. I, yeah, I yeah, think that, that. Yeah. It's not even a question, like. Kaka has to apply a lot of pressure. If he can get a carry or snipe, that would be ideal. Try to win at least one lane for his team. Um, but a drop ranger or a puck is so hard to lane against. Like, you get so much damage. Like, he hits for almost 70. Murana's base damage is 55. Like, that's a massive difference at low level. And you can see that Kaka wants to prioritize, like, trying to this lane. He is going to get the curd. So that's a really oh. good start. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, absolutely. Great start. Uh, oh, I'm getting it back. Hero. Yeah, they have got the back of a Zai. And uh, Zai, oh, bit of a misplay, but uh, he heals himself whilst on full <laughs> health. Maybe hoping to heal some ale there. But, uh, all right, Zai, we'll pretend we didn't see that. Uh, he might be using. Uh... Actually, no, you wouldn't do that with quick cast. I, I don't know. That was. This the first time we've seen a misfire from a heal on Zai. He did it in the uh, game where he was playing as well. And there we go, that was the second heal. Uh, he does end up giving the way of uh, Samel. Uh, up top, Kaka's moved up here to have some eyes on Universe. Universe. Trying to play it careful now. They're trying to have a bit of a go for it. Even 9 could be bored as well. Just looking for the body blocks, Kaka, with some excellent movements here, blocking up Universe. Universe, he can't seem to get himself out of it, falling incredibly low. Four stacks. Is it going to be enough? Oh, the fifth one it is. Faith will find it. 
Great play for Newbie and Kaka doing it across the map there and some fantastic body blocking action from the Bounty Hunter. That was a really nice voice as well. I thought he was going to do it at 4 because I think he had like 200 and some odd health left. It, it would have been really close if it actually killed him or not. And Universe full well knowing just tries to pop the cell in enough time, but it, he just eats the fifth poison. Very nice looking at it there, maybe. And this is the start they need. This is this is perfect. Kill the courier, get first blood. It really isn't. Well, Universe tempted to go in a bit on U9. He's got a fair few stacks up. Kaka there to give him a quick tap and force him to back away from the Luna. Mid lane matchup, Samael 12 for 5 against the 8 for 1 of SCCC. I mean, we've seen this pretty much in all three games. Samael, he just seems to have the better time at the the, the, the start, just in terms of 1v1 skill, and well, to uh, manages fair, to come out top in CS. He's had two favorable matchups. Yeah. So, okay. Like, this one is definitely rest. his favor, and the last one was also, I think, his favor. I mean, I, I haven't played much Timber versus Storm, but I can't imagine Storm is too hard of a time lane. So, I, I think a lot of it is the, the matchup itself. Especially in this game. This is the most lopsided one, I feel. Under the moment. Comparison between RTZ and Unai. And obviously, Unai got involved in the kill up top, but RTZ ahead. And farm having the slightly easier lane. Not a lot the KAP can do to, to harass this drought of lane. As you said, they've got that strong potential down there with the Venge and with the Warlock back up top lane. Again, Universe being caught on a little bit. He's a little bit safer now. Obviously, we saw him get taken down, but he was level 1 at that time. Now he's got the Firefly. Just a little bit harder for Newbie to cap out, uh, catch out and bring out. I mean, committing these three heroes to top lane and, you know, not really getting a kill. Getting the first one was great, but if they don't make anything happen after the fact, it's it's kind of hard to justify, you know, Kaka sitting around here for too much longer. I mean, they want to try to apply pressure to the tower, but they've already sent the uh, Zai up here. And with him here, I don't think they can kill Universe either. So it's still, again, the emphasis is on getting a lot accomplished here in the early game. If you look at the farm, like, Artur and, and Sumail are going to pull ahead, there's no questions. And if, even if keeping Universe down, he's obviously going to be able to farm jungle at some point. He's already level 3. On the bottom lane, we saw a fair bit of punching onto KP. He's got a south, so it'll be alright, but... We are seeing that two of them, the Venge and the Drow, have a lot of damage and chance to take it. Take a kill if that tide's out of position. As he will secure himself the rune. Kaka came across towards the mid to get a little bit of XP, but still, yeah, lagging behind. Bottom lane again, KP being forced back, and he's down to just a verify now, so he'll have to make the long walk back to base. So more and more space for RTZ on the Drow Ranger as the CS gets better and better. And mid lane, Zai's headed over. At the same time, Kaka, oh, he's looking for the, he's looking for the courier snipe, and he made, ooh, they're playing it safe. The you pings know. come out. EG not to full foul for it again. In fact, they've found him. They haven't got any way of cancelling that TP though, Puck. Ah, just under 100 XP away from having Dream Coil. Didn't quite have the ult. But nonetheless, they, they, they keep that career alive. Absolutely crucial there. It did look like Kaka was on the verge of taking it down again. Yeah, I think he needs one shot and two autos. It would have been close. If they had the speed boost, that might not have died anyway. But yeah, it's, it's really nice that they managed to keep it alive. And you know, SC is actually doing a fairly good job. I think a lot of that's attributed to the fact that, you know, Kaka's been hanging around mid a little bit and getting the courier snipe. Normally this lane you would see Sumail probably even further ahead than he is right now. But just the, the roaming pressure that Nubi are able to apply is helping him out quite a bit. I see. That's for an arrow. I'll take the range creep. Bottom lane. Kaka coming down. And we've got the three man down here on both sides. Universe has actually come down. Uh, to join the forces of Crit and Arteezy. As uh, Uni at the moment probably going to look to try and It'll clear up some of the camps. And oh, indeed, Samael goes in first. Use the Dream Coil. The back up of Zai. And they will find well. the kill on the mid lane. By the well on the bottom lane. Newbies come in under the cover of Moonlight Shadow. They'll take down Artor. Universe trying to see if he can get something in return. A lot of stacks up onto Faith. They'll find the Shadow Demon kill. Not able to get anything else there. So a two for one trade across the map. RTZ going down, but uh, we've got Z return. EG find that kill onto SC on the mid lane. Yeah, favorable for EG, no doubt. I think that, um, man, Newbie have such a... Feels like it's such a hard game for them already, just because of how, how difficult it is for them to actually get farm their lanes. Like, the Marana was losing a little bit, just has a death knell. 
push that's for EG is going to be coming very, very fast. And you can see the rotations coming out from Newbie. They know that they can't just let the lanes sit the way that they are. They've already used Moonlight Shadow. SC does have an Inviso. See if they can make something happen here. Uh, Kaka's got eyes on crit. SC's been brought down in. Yep, the arrow's going to connect. Crit in a lot of trouble. The rest of EG just simply going to bail. They've got to let him go. <laughs> Newbie take down the Vengeful Spirit. Artsy's oh, just focusing on the farm back in the lane. And uh, as you mentioned, Newbie just desperate to keep these rotations going. Continue to try and find these pickoffs to break apart the successful start EG's had in the lanes. I think for maybe not the third game, but definitely two out of three games, I always see that the supports of EG are consistently getting like more out of the laning phase than what Newbie are able to. And I'm not sure if that's just because of a playstyle thing. You know, a lot of times you'll see under level bounty hunter until 10 minutes when you can buy that tome of knowledge. But I think just that alone is kind of what makes the Warlock pick work for them. Because look at Stop, he's, he's really just hanging around top. You know, he's not trying to go for any ganks, he's just soaking EXP. Whereas Universe is farming the jungle because they just have potential on that, that capability to be more efficient during this stage. So even if somebody's not farming, somebody else is always getting something. As Eclipse is going to be popped here by U9 in top lane, and Zai just jukes it out completely. Alright, that's... What? I'm actually glad that you probably didn't catch that whole thing. I did not catch that. I mean, for, for you 9s sake, what? Uh, let's did just it, did... say it wasn't great. All right. Up the clips, and then I like, just walked into the trees and took zero damage. <laughs> that that was it. That That's all it was. Okay. A uh, bit of a, a web on there from the Luna. Top lane, SC's going to come in. Uh, this is going to allow mid lane to, to have a bit of pressure put on Universe and some out. Time for the tower. Bottom lane, Artis, he's having to hide it. Uh, sorry, Crit's hiding in the tree line. As, uh, just a little bit worried about the whereabouts of newbie supports. And Kaka's going to reveal himself towards mid. As they're ready to go in. Hanging around, there's the setup. Now the TP's coming for as well. Newbie wanting to try and make a bit of a go to Universe. He's going to get himself out with the Firefly. Samel drops the Dream Core to make sure that Newbie can't chase it down. Universe, a fair few stacks up on him. He should be fine. And we'll back away. I see. Dropping the uh, arrow onto Samel. Samel, long mana. And he's not going to be able to make a go on that. So just a bit of a skirmish, but no one going down in that mid lane. That was a little weird exchange. And I think that, again, showcases one of Newbie's problems is, you know, without the use of Ravage, they have a very hard time getting kills. I mean, I guess Faith wasn't six. Maybe if he had Demonic Purge, that would have been a kill. Should have allowed him to land at least one more poison, and obviously you get that uh, 200 bonus damage, too, so... Maybe just, um, unfortunate timing more than anything else, and they're gonna go for another play here. Alright, Faith with the smoke up. Nice towards the bottom. Crits on his own hit. And Faith looks to come in, he'll get the setup for the SSC. Throws the arrow out, he's not gonna whiff that. Jumps in, Newbie burst him out. Crit, a free kill hit for the side of Newbie. Samel does have his blink dagger now complete though, so we can start to expect to see Samel being a little bit more active around the map and reacting to those kind of plays. For the time being, Newbie still getting away with these pickoffs. Leading the way four for two, but as you said, farm wise, it's, it's still looking great for EG. I think the first showcase of the Ravage in a, an actual team fight will be what really dictates if Newbie are going to be able to stay in this game too much longer. Because right now it's like they're you can see how frantic they are moving around the map. They're always trying to do something. Whereas you know EG are kind of calm. We're going to farm slain. We're going to push here. Our supports are soaking the the proper amount of experience. Those guys are level six. Crit's going to be level six soon. They almost have everything that they need, and they are going to get safe lane and trade away from newbies, so they did their own tier one, but I'm I'm still kind of just waiting. I'm sure you have track obviously coming out soon for Baka. He's a little bit away from six once the Toma knowledge gets to him. And when that happens, it'll be very, very helpful because every kill means so much more. For now, I still feel like EG have the advantage. And EG with the smoke. We're going to see if they can get someone, catch someone out here as they move across, but the die scanned it out. They know what's going on. The mail. Nice, she gets gone on it. Demonic Purge as well. The backup is coming in from EG. The chaotic offering actually going to be dropped onto KP. He tried to go in for crit. The Eclipse comes in. KP now with the Ravage hitting them all, but he's got to back off. He's incredibly low, but already EG have lost two. U9 continues to try and fight, but EG now turn around. They'll beat down the Luna. They also managed to finish off KP. So even though Newbie were quick to find two kills, the turnaround's there from EG, finding two in return. 
And the favorable trade as well for the side of Evil Genius is that they take down two cores, including U9's Luna. That was Eclipse and Ravage used as well, so... Or even Moonlight, so that, that was literally their own sense. The unfortunate part was Kaka was an actual 6 when the, the team fight kicked off, so... Because of the fact, I don't think it got track killed there. But interesting to know that Sumail, when he orbed, he actually orbed behind the tier 1 before it died into 3 heroes. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but he, he pretty much decided. He did coil 3 though, which then resulted in um, obviously you not dying because he was kind of isolated on the other rats, already a bit expended. So, all, all still a game there from EG. Maybe not as clean as they want it to be, but they, they did get their objective. Yeah, we can see at the moment it's obviously very early days in that worth difference, but EG, that will start to get the swing going their way. And we have just got the short pause at the moment. Oh, it's easy. Is out of the game momentarily. Hopefully, he'll be back in time to join the rest of his team on the verge of potentially winning the land here, MDL. And he is back. He's ready. We'll be able to get this game three back underway. Yeah, U9 turning up to the fight that as well. He had a big impact at the start, but they've got to try and keep this Luna alive towards the end. Um, as, as we saw, you know, they lose the Luna, and suddenly the momentum is in EG's hand. Yeah, the fight was very disjointed from both sides. The Ravage from KP was great. It was just a matter of not really being any follow-up after the fact, because Jamal was on the back line being disrupted, and he had his own life for it, but I guess in the group of things, still ended up being okay. Looks like he's going to be going the, the path of sale as well. So they are going for a very aggressive style of vitamization, and I assume that means they want to get you know all these towers on map as soon as they can. They know Ravage is down for at least another minute. What am I? Oh, all kind of standing. There. Casually sidesteps off the arrow. That was near to connecting. And uh, EG are now on the back of And they've actually smoked up. They're going to look for a bit of a, a smart wrap around here. Samael. Universe is I. Ready to go. Samael's got oh, the dream coil. Shot. No TP available either. Oh, oh this is a great time for Samael. If he can find a good jump here. He's eyeing them up, Magic Missile onto KP, Samal jumps in, onto the two on the back lines, the Dream Core, the Silence hits both, and he's going to be back, the stun will connect onto him, Faith caught out by the damage, he'll disrupt himself, but he's still going to go down, in the side of it, all crit, playing with KP in the tree line, now U9 TP's down, looking to turn this, in fact it's EG losing two, Kaka's got the track onto Samal, Samal getting pushed to the face, they'll only just TP RTZ out in time, and to be able to get themselves in position, just as it, the moment calls for it, the TP down for the Luna Lab to turn it around. Of what looked to be a smart play from EG, but Newbie this time, they're a step ahead, and Zai. And he spotted out Karka, but Karka, he's going to follow him. KP's around, a little bit low on the old health, and it looks like Zai will be able to walk this off. But a nice fight for Newbie there, getting U9 stuck in, and a bit of a mess up from EG. I feel like uh, Sumer especially club that one. I don't think. Okay, so he blinks in. Normally, what you want to do is you just want to sound score. So that way, here, like, Rana can't just get the leap off the game distance. But the problem was, they got too far away too fast, and then he took the coil anyway. Universe goes to the into a dude gets purged. And then he can't even get his lasso because he didn't blink yet. And then he ends up. And then you have this really disjointed fight where the list P was a cooldown. It just came up in the middle of the fight. And then you don't have Golem either. So they're okay out of the and then EG. Um, some. To be honest, with that team fight, I think they should have been able to do that. Okay, okay. Trying to lead the way here. <laughs> EGR aware of this though. Just put one out on the sentry. The rest of them actually smoked up, so that could catch them off guard. Gust onto two universe, popping the drums, thinking about trying to go in for a lasso, but Faith with the demonic oh, purge holds back the tips. Coming out from U9, Chaotic Ring will be dropped, but it would quickly just be taken down here by the side of Newbie. They get a free kill, they get a free goal, and Newbie comes in with a Ravage. Onto Ardstorf, it's a four-man dream card, but EG, they just got to use this to run. They've got nothing to follow it up with. They end up losing crit as well. And Newbie, they're trying to chase in for more. The gush from KP takes down RTZ. Samel jumps back in, trying to play around with them. U9 slow, but Zai and Samel... And they actually find a kill in return of this. They've just got to run back off, hide behind the tier twos. And Newbie coming in hard, taking three. And again, it's EG dropping this ults, but it doesn't matter. They just haven't got the wombo there at the right time to deal with Newbie running at them at this stage. Yeah, everyone's kind of on a different page, it seems. Like, Zai's playing golems that pretty much just die. I think he wanted Sumail to kill there or something like that. But there's a really big 
kind of the case right now in Ani G, and they need to kind of fix that if they want to win this game because you can't just give away kills to a team with track, right? So Kaka has been throwing out tracks on track. And every single one of these team fights that they lose, even if they don't get an objective, Ubi are still getting a tremendous amount of gold and experience in these fights. And that's also going to be the complete mech here from KP now. Looking a little bit shaky for EG at the moment. I mean, they're supposed to be a very objective driven lineup, and they're not getting really anything. Newbie not. Playing. Absolutely. And 12 to 5 at the moment. Newbie definitely looking in the best position they have so far in, in the games this series. Kaka scouting it all out at the moment. He's going to be spotted, though. They've got the dust. Quick reactions in Kaka. Yeah, he'll pay for his position. A little drop of water on the way down. And he, now it's actually going to be pinged out. EG are aware. So Kaka there with a bit of a panic play, and it's going to hurt them. Easy to find the pickoff and get themselves in position. This time they'll try taking down the tier by the looks of it, before fighting behind a tier 2. And I, I understand why they put that fight. They just yeah. didn't execute <laughs> they, they needed to. Yeah, they should uh, be more or less... I might get denied, but yeah, coming forward here. Uh, well, with the 4, AP has got Ravage one twenty second. Yeah, looks like that's going to be enough to, to kind of hold EG back. They'll group up. Moving in. Up to TZ. Ah, he'll get it. Looks like there's not going to be any chance for a deny. But a newbie are teeping in for the for the men. They maybe want to try and find a fight with that Ravage that's now back and available. Five seconds for KP. There's the Moonlight looking to set something up. A crit already teeping out. Artor heading back as well. They had this ward down. They saw what was going on. Actually in the mid lane. Crit and Samel, with the use of the Dream Coil, able to find the killer onto S Triple C, whilst the rest of Newbie were looking for action down bottom. So, making use of the fact that they knew that Newbie were all down here and that S Triple C was on his own. I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled actually, and I think a lot of it is because of that misplacement of warp, um, the one by the river near the rune spot, that warp pretty much doesn't see any. Like, I think he meant to put it a little bit farther to the left, but regardless, it's like. He made that rotation. I thought he was scouted by the ward. Apparently, he wasn't. And he tried to go for the instant TPF, which these crits came in time. And then he just ended up dying. For it. So, a nice pick there. Moving some EG very much needed, given the way the game had been going for the last couple of minutes. But, yeah, they still have some work to do, I think, to, to really put themselves back into a comfortable position. It's going to help a lot once Universe picks up his blink here in about like, a second or two. And, um,. Off the back of that, hopefully he can actually get a last place. He's actually been struggling. Like, not just this game, but it feels like this whole series has been having a hard time. At the moment at the bottom, Kaka. Eyes on to some out. They've got KP. KP does have a Ravage. But, yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky one to try and go for, just with the two of them. And obviously wanting to save the Ravage for a bigger occasion. ZG. Again, grouping up as five. We'll see if they go for some kind of objective base play, try and get a tier 2 or such. Roshan is up. Uh, both teams, I mean, one's got the Luna, one's got the Drow. They've got decent potential at taking it, but I guess both sides would want to find a kill before committing to Rosh at this stage, early on. Yeah, it's it's super dangerous fighting around the pit for both teams. Like, Ravage and Eclipse on one on one side, then you have, like, Bat with Blink and Wallach, Golem, and Coil on the other. It's, it's terrifying, I think. Vision-wise, I actually would imagine that the team with the bat during daytime might have a, a bit of an advantage because they can get the vision. But then you also have to go for tracks, so it's uh, it's tough. Act both teams right now. Uh, well, they had that smoke, eg, but now wearing off, unable to find any kind of action with it. Do get that ward down, of course, pretty deep, and yeah, some good warning here from the side of eg all around to kind of walk towards this mid lane towards the, the Roche pit, so they'll see if Newbie do sweep back around. Now it's just a case of backing up, continuing the farm at the moment. It's very close, EG with a slight edge with their two cores. Overall, I mean, it's, it's just 500 gold difference in it. It's incredibly close at this stage of the game. Each team needing a kind of a big team fight to set them apart from their opponent at this stage. And both teams, they definitely got the tools to kick it off in, in terms of a 5v5. Yeah, that's why this game is so much dependent on the execution. No. Yeah, that's the error here. Oh, Quippy jumps up. There's the Dream Coil. Dropped onto two. Hasn't got any backup at the time being. Kaka actually getting the track onto Samael. Does Newbie come across under the cover of Moonlight Shadow? And Samael just gets himself back to the safety of his team. And it's not the, quite the jumper they want to go for, but of course, he had that Arcane out, so 
Dream Coil will be back up in 30 seconds. So not too long of a wait for that one. And Newbie immediately smoking. They want to try and do something with this time. AP wrapping around for Hein. They have this ward here as well, so they'll see EG if they come back into this position. But EG keeping it smart. Keeping themselves in their own jungle, the other side of the tier one. Chris going to be one to lead forward. Actually gets the swap onto Kaka. And first, if he can find an opening, but they've got to be careful. KP walks into the middle of it all. He does have that Ravage available. The Chaos Goblin's going to do drop. Samel comes up with the side. There's your Ravage. Samel in the midst of it all gets blown up. Samel's out of the fight. The Golem's going to quickly die as well to the Eclipse. As Newbie find themselves one. Can they get themselves anything more? KP moving in with a gush onto RTZ. Zai caught on the front of it. Kaka, Faith, and SE focusing him down. The mech will be popped. It's not going to be enough to save Zai. And Newbie moving in for more potentially. If with the setup, disruption onto our tour. U9 trying to close the gap on the Drow Ranger. KP hits the gush. That is going to be it for now. They'll get the tier one. But again, a very nice fight for newbie. KP getting himself stuck in the middle with a big ravage. And we're just seeing, I mean, the, it just feels like this game. Zai's golems just do absolutely nothing in the fight. They just get eaten up by the damage of newbie. We, we haven't actually seen the combo. Like, we've never seen a golem and a coil. It's always one or the other. So instead of it being like when they, they dropped that, that Chrono into Golem before in the first game and it seemed like really devastating, we're just not having that, that synergy because Sumail popped a coil that didn't do anything and then by the time his coil was back up he was already dead. So I think there's a lot of misplays going on from EG. I'm not sure what it is. It just it does not feel like they're playing um, their, their full potential Dota right now. I don't know if it was something about the break, but they're losing a little bit of the mojo that they had in game one and two. They've still got the potential to bring it back, of course. It's just one bad fight, but they really can't afford to lose multiple more. As Kakra, of course, with that track, will allow Newbie to, to climb ahead with each of these engagements. Kind of eyes around. Guarding the Rose Champion at the moment, EG. In terms of going for it, they know that there's no Ravage, there's no Eclipse. So now would be a good time, really, for, for them to fight. They don't have Chaotic Offering, but they've got everything else on the side of EG. RTZ on the front at the moment. Universe has the Blink Lasso at the ready. Newbie, keeping back. Moonlight Shadow is going to be popped to Samael. Heading back with the rest of the team as Newbie. They'll stick together and EG just unable to find an opening to jump on them. I think they're feeling a bit, uh, a bit squeamish after the last couple of fights. They, they just haven't been going well. They need to make sure that they land all of their abilities in conjunction to get a kill. Because if they don't, there's like Tidehunter mech, there's Ravage, there's Shadow Demon Disruption. There's multiple ways to save. So you need to make sure that you're you're like killing that hero instantly. Like you just need to take him out and then move on to the next target. Radiant is under attack. I can see utilize some of the power of this draft and get some pressure onto the tier two. And instantly some out tracked up. Universe is in the tree line. Gonna see if he can try and get himself a potential pick. Tides at the front, not really the hero that Universe wants to go for. But a newbie's positioning just off point as they keep the rest of them behind. KP the only one to come forward. The tower, not quite yet to go down. Oh. There's KP! Oh, jumps in with a three-man ravage. RTZ immediately burst it down. And now EG, they've got to be careful how they take it. This time the coil, the golem, the combo's there this time. They hit it, Samael and Zaidu, but u 9 still there. And with the Eclipse available coming in, they're still looking to take the fight. Newbie, they may have lost two, but they're looking to show off their power here. KP jumps forward, has vision onto Universe. u 9 and KP chasing down the bat into the tree line. They should be able to clean this one up as well. And they do double kill for U9, but it looks like EG are done. Samel's come in, gets the silence onto KP and U9. Can they play around with this? Zai and Samel. It's a 2v2. Zai and Samel against KP and U9. KP in the trees. It's a 3 for 3 trade at the moment. Samel's a little off point there with the orb, but he's got the Yule set up. On to KP. Oh, Actually Jesus. missing the silence there. And so KP's going to be allowed to walk off, and now they've got to be careful. Kaka's come into lane. The track out. They have got the sentry down, EG, so it looks like Bounty won't chase. So the fight ends, and I believe it was just a 3 for 3 at the end of that. And have a look at the gold gain, but of course, with the track gold being thrown into the fray, that's still kind of a fight that only just benefits EG. And that's them fighting from behind. It's a 200 advance there, but because of the track gold, just kind of keeping newbie very, very close, even in engagements where. EG should be feeling that they're in the better position because they've won an equal fight when they were behind, but Track Gold nullifies that. Uh, I mean, the fight started off really well because I don't think EG knew that the Blink had been delivered to Tidehunter. So he gets the, the free roll of Blink and gets a three or four on Ravage. Yeah, big dies, KP. He pops instantly and then 
point, the drow is a huge chunk of damage in the same chunk. This is five range, right? So if your drow is dead, everybody on the team loses 57 damage. That is a huge, huge chunk of damage that's just taken away instantly. So all things considered, I'd say EG mitigated that pretty well. A crit. Oh, he's come across for a bit of warding, but Kaka had his eyes on him. The track's out, KP's gonna start to play with him, EG is coming across, but I don't think they're gonna be able to take the Venge, the Venge is down, Universe still wanting to try something here, coming in, and immediately the Moonlight's popped, and Newbie, they are in the favorable position, so EG just have to back themselves out of there, and just accept the uh, the fate of Crit. And Newbie have been doing such a good job at coordinating their fights this game. Seems like a, a revitalized team. I don't know what happened between the break, but it seems like Drew's kind of on the foot here for game number three. They seem to have a, a pretty clear idea of what they need to do. And EG, like, they know what they need to do, they're just not, not quite clicking yet. I guess the bottom fight that we just saw was probably the best case of, uh, of their potential so far in this game, but they got a lot road ahead of them if they want to really take this away from Nubi and go 3 0. Now, this I mean, did Nubi. I wonder if they get. You know, the, the pounds go for Roshan soon. They've got Ravage and Eclipse back up. They, they can fight very well around the pit. I guess the same compared still for EG as, as Dream Coil and Chaotic offering are at the ready once again. Yeah, this, this game certainly all about the team fights, so as you've been saying from the start since the draft. And uh, at the moment, Newbie just with the slightly few more advantages off the back of it. 18 to 10 at the moment. E as we saw there, I mean, we did see a fight down bottom. When they do hit the Dream Coil Kaude offering, it, it does a hell of a lot. They've just got to make sure that they land that combo before Newbie gets in there, before KP's in the midst of them all, causing them to scatter and, and just throw out their ults willy-nilly. They've got to hit the timings together. Yeah, just unfortunate. Long, like, it, it, the entire game, I, I didn't really feel like they really properly. You know, for now, I still think that EG have an alright shot. I just think that's okay. So you're dead. Okay. A lot of hate down there for Sameo. KP just jumping in, no mess, and hits the Ravage. The rest of EG are out. They just want to do rush off that, yeah. He pings out. They're gonna walk to the pit. Um, that's not a main for killing, but it's, you know, the, the coil is down. Just go to the pit and just kill it. And it's done here on this Luna as well. The Roche most likely. That's what GG in the offense. The Scrum is like a big hard hitting initiation hero, and it's worth doing on a spell like that if it's larger. So, newbie, once again, putting themselves in the receipt here in the reading. There we have it. Aegis into the hands of U9, a man that's also only 200 gold away from having the BKB complete as well. and. I mean, picking up a BKB against EG's lineup, it's going to make it a lot harder, of course, for Sameo. I mean, even for uh, for Zaya, such in these fights, and and you know, Luna's going to be able to have free reign, locking down, chasing whoever he wants, and eliminating them fairly swiftly with the amount of damage that he's doing at this stage. EG, they need they need a game plan, and at the moment, it just seems that newbies is stronger. They're leading up to about seven and a half k lead. I mean, in the uh, series, uh, the uh, first two games, you know, it's very close kind of up until the late game point. And this one, Nubia, is certainly the ones with the edge. CG grouped up towards the top. Again, both teams. Everything apart from the Ravage available for Nubi. But EG would be fighting into an Aegis, and already, yeah, they're, they're backing up. They do not want to mess with Nubi at this stage. Just trying to get whatever map pressure they can. I mean, it's tough for you now. They got... They don't really have the vision. You get the aggressive warning coming out from Newbie. You have almost full vision of EG's side of that point, and, and most of those wards are fresh. So unless they get dewarded, they're going to be able to read EG's moves pretty well. And at this point, it's kind of like Newbie need to make a mistake because they've gotten so many free fights just on the the synergy of EG not being there that they have so much farm on their cores, like Manta, BKB, with a Dragon has on the Dominator. Yuan's got an Aegis, he's also got an additional 1800 gold in inventory. Oh, I see a jump in for some out. Looking to play around a bit with SCCC. With the Dagon, it's a fair bit of burst, not quite enough. And uh, meanwhile, at the top, maybe find themselves that tier 1. EG looking to put pressure on the tier 2 in the mid lane as well. Again, as soon as any sign of, of newbie reacting comes through, EG just have to back off, avoid the fights for the time being. 
until they're really sure that they can find just a, a perfect way to take them and, and that they can get the initiation because pretty much kind of, you know, 8 out of 10 times it's been newbie getting the jump and that's kind of what's really hurt EG's lineup. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Oh, oh Zai. Zai. They're dropping the Eclipse for this, no messing as U9 and Kaka find themselves the pickoff. And that, you know, that's 50 seconds that you've not got to worry about this golem being dropped on your head. So Newbie gets straight on with the push. Ditch is going down at the same time. EG, maybe seeing if they can pressure Newbie to react. They have got the push down bottom. There'll be one TP back from KP. Fortification coming out as well from the side of Newbie. But the rest of Newbie just standing strong in the mid lane. Hitting onto the tier 3 at the moment. Now the TP backs come out from EG. And they'll try and do their best to slow down this push. I, mean, I don't know what they're supposed to do without Golem. I mean, I guess newbie aren't feeling like they want to push anything too crazy. They already sent K, uh, K back, so I guess that'll be the end of it. But a -Blade now picked up on SC. Everything's still looking great for be here. Looks like they're going to potentially be keeping their MD alternate life alive. Absolutely doing everything they can to bring this one back, newbie. EG still with a chance, but as time ticks on, it gets harder and harder. And there's going to be a smoke from Newbie, so Newbie not looking to let this get any easier for EG. I believe they're still got about a minute and a half left on this Aegis, and they want to try and utilize it in one more fight. Evil Geniuses, all of them back towards the base. Artis is on his way to join the boys as well. They want to try and fight this. You're potentially looking for KP to have to jump up to the high ground. And go for a big ravage. And we'll see how it kicks off here. Unite, ready to start the lead. Some out, tracked up, immediately blinks out. The tier 3 starts to melt. There's the jump in though. Universe gets oh. the last one to Unite, but Unite's got the Aegis and more. A Universe is straight out of there. KP comes in with the three man ravage. Crit on his way back, but KP's on the chase down. Slides forward, slaps him down with an anchor smash and two dead on EG. Newbie have the racks opened up. The Golem will be dropped. And they actually find a kill with it though. They're chasing down KP. They'll get the Tide Hunter. Looking towards Kaka. There's a three man dream call from somehow with a dag on. They burst it down in a second. They need more. Because onto to Unite, they might just be able to do it. Aegis is still there, but it's going to be very close to expiring. Unite, he just does his best to get the damage out. And they have killed Samael. He's down for 70 seconds. And Unite is back up. EG again trying their best. They do find the kills, but at the end of the day, they still lose the melee racks. A newbie still coming out on top in terms of numbers. What happened to EG between game two and three? His universe just blinked in, lassoed, and then four stepped himself into the enemy team. That is just something that you don't see. Nobody does that. At least not at this level. So I, I don't know what's going on. I feel like we're not actually watching. This is like some top EG with the, the amount of misplays I've seen in this game. Uh, look at that, I mean, just look at that lead now. For over 15,000 going the way of Newbie. That's going to be a mass climb for EG to bring themselves back into this game. As Newbie just seemed to have it all figured out. I mean, just off the start, you know, Kaka. He was doing bouncing out. He was there every, every place that he needed to be in. And then just those early fights where EG couldn't hit the Dream Coil into the Chaotic. And Newbie were able to come in. KP, of course, been having a great game. Each and every time, the Ravage is being absolutely perfect. And U9, of course, as we can see, top of the net worth, a clear, pretty much 4K above anyone else in this game. This Luna, incredibly fat and farmed at 34 minutes in. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I guess that... EG can still potentially a fight if they get a lasso target or able burst down, but that's, that's pretty much the only way. And it's so difficult against heroes like Todd, because if you, if you lasso, for example, and you pull somebody out, KP has Blink and Worse himself, so he can always cover the distance between, you know, the last of target and the, the rest of your team. So you can always get in and get a counter ravage. He's even going for Refresher now because he's got Perseverance. He's got plenty of mana to throw out the full combo. That hero is extremely good against Bat because you can never actually lasso him either. If you lasso the Tide, he just Krakens and he ravages your team regardless. And there's... Not really a whole lot of magic unity on the side of EG right now. In fact, they do not have a single BKB. So against that kind of like AOE team fight potential that the Tide Hunt's bringing right now, in addition to the damage output that you have because they have such a lead, it's I don't want to say it's impossible to take a five man, but it's it's pretty damn hard.
I mean, do, do EG needs to go out uh, and fight, or can they wait for newbie to come to them? I actually, I actually think they need to split push for now. Yeah. They have two heroes, fairly mobile on bat and the pocket, and they try to split the map as best they can. The issue is, at this stage in the game, everybody has a ton of arm. So, like, heroes like Tide can catch, you know, if Bounty Hunter tracks you, he, he knows where you're going and stuff like that. So you, you can tell that EG, they don't want to fight, because they're pretty much on the opposite side of the map right now. And they do have vision on the side of Nudie, so they saw at least a little bit of their movement. And they know what's going on, they're just actively choosing not to fight, because they realize at this stage, 5 versus 5 is just not going to favor them. It did at some point in the early game, maybe like 20 minutes ago. But now, after losing, you know, fight after fight after fight, Nudie are so far ahead that you can't can't topple them that way. You have to you have to go about it by either split push or, you know, try to delay the game, I guess. Wait for a mistake. Yeah, looking at uh, the build of RTs, you know, he's picked up the Maelstrom. Do you think he's just going to go for the Maelstrom and then get the Aghanims next? Because, you know, he realizes he is going to have to clean out these stronger waves. I mean, that's a possibility. Um, inventory is kind of running out of room, but it's a little bit problematic. I think Drow, out of all the rush heroes, really wants to have something like a Hurricane Pike, so I don't know if he can get rid of that. And it feels like he just bought that Diffusal Blade, so I'm kind of unsure as to what he's going to get rid of if he wants to go to Path of Bags. If he just has, like, regular melee, that's also fine. It, it obviously adds to Wave Care. But typically, you think of the two items together with Warlock, that makes it super scary, right? Because then you have Adel Bonds with the Lightning, with the Split Arrows, that just do an insane amount of damage. Um, I'm not sure as to, to how it's going to go item progression-wise for now. I mean, heck, if he gets those items, I would be surprised. I think that Nubi most likely win before that point. Well, let's see if that's going to be the case. We're ready to get the game back on. Everyone's back in. EG still on the back for this game. 12 to 23. Net worth lead is around the 17 and a half. Well, probably around 17 and a half at the moment for the side of Nubi. Somehow continuing to level up his dagger. What's level 3 now at the moment, so... Got a fair bit of burst, but of course, so is the side of newbie. And as the push comes in down bottom, four seconds. Yeah, they're just about to have Ravage available again on KP. So newbie very much ready for the fight, and we'll see if they come in hard and try and try and push EG to come back and defend. They can get a bit of pressure on top, and already EG heading back, getting themselves in position to react to the side of newbie. But again, it's going to be hard. Both teams. All tools available uh, very shortly. Chaotic offering as well. Nearly back off cooldown from Zai. Now SC looks for the cheeky jump in. Every bit of burst onto Samel. It's not going to be enough to nuke him down straight away. And at the moment, it's just the illusion spam. Coming in with the SD Luna. Just getting the damage down onto the tower. And uh, that looks to be that for the moment for newbie as they back away. Still a few minutes before we'll see Roshan back up. And uh, Kaka at the moment just pushing out top lane as well. So. Newbie just looking to, I guess, just try and get control and, and maintain it at the whole map and have all those lanes shoved in. Yeah, that's the best way to play it. It just means that when all the lanes are pushed, you have the least probability of, of making anything happen without it being just. So if, if all your lanes are outside of your base and you try to smoke, it's like, okay, well, they're all missing and they're not spending their base, so obviously they're going for some kind of play. It's the, the safest and most effective way of keeping your lead is by keeping all the ways pushed in as hard as you can. So. That being said, looks like EGR is still able to get on the map a little bit and try to find something, if not just a little bit of farm. But yeah, it's, it's a real, real rough road. I wonder if not buying BKB on the draw was a bit of a mistake. Because if their, time, their timing is so medium oriented that if you have magic immunity for when your team is the strongest, things like Blink, Ravage, and Eclipse, and other stuff, don't really scare you that much. So I'm kind of wondering if Manta was really the item or if you know, it's going the BKB would have been a better choice. You know, the other heroes that had a similar to the Drow, like TB in the past, do stuff like that, and it's worked out fairly well. But suppose EG still have a chance here. Crit's got to be a big. It crit doesn't have a TP. Uh, he did probably. Oh wait, never mind. Cock, I didn't see him. Oh yeah, he's he's gonna hug that fountain for quite a while. I mean, I, it's gonna be quite a while. I feel before Crit's actually gonna be able to get himself back out. So he knows the they do wave have timing, so he might try to walk past the wave is gone. It's, uh, that's a bit spooky. I mean, especially if newbies start to come in hard with the push. They're gonna be a man down. He's just gonna walk yeah. out. I'm gonna see U9 stick around here on the top lane, though. It's just gonna make it a 
little bit spookier for crit to get back. The other thing too is since Luna has night vision, he has to be super careful. Because if he even Ooh. shows in lane, Luna will see you. She sees pretty much everything. Oh, he's he fine. Be fine. Yeah. Agent crit is out. The safety bar looks a bit. The game's kind of slowed down a bit. I still think that probably favors newbie just because they're the ones who feel safe. But when you feel safe, you just naturally more effective on the map, getting more farm. Stuff like that. Okay, so it looks like we do have the Aghanims now completed on the drought. And he got rid of the hell of the Dominator, actually. Oh, universe! Uh, he's just gonna go immediately for the TP out. They got anything to stop Ooh. this? Uh, I see he'd already used the IR though, as of it was, but uh, maybe getting the vision for, for a disruption. Hey, yeah, Universe quick with the TP out. Uh, this is open up space. I think he would have ravaged that if he saw the yeah. Fire Rider, actually. Because, yeah, again, it's, it's similar to the last Ravage, where they just they ravage Sumail, they kill him, they take Roche. It would have been a similar effect. You just kill one hero, you know that they're not going to fight for your five. You can free Roche. They might get it anyway, though, given the, the circumstances. I don't think that EG are looking to fight into this, and KP is getting dangerously close to that refresher territory, and when that happens... Oh, uh, he really is. Good, good luck, EG. <laughs> good freaking... Surviving a double ravage. Can't even survive yeah. one. Aegis onto the Luna once more. U9 ready to go. And so with that Roshan kill here, he is very, very close to KP. To having that double ravage online. And it's going to be a bit of a nightmare for EG. But still, as we see, they're doing their best here to just get what they can across the map. Constantly splitting up. You know, for the most part, recently they have been able to avoid the movements of Newbie. But soon, they're going to have to face their demons and, and force, uh, force themselves to come together for a full 5 on 5. And that really is going to be the true test. EG want to avoid that situation as long as they can. Yeah. They do not want to 5v5. You know, there I, it I, is. I've been thinking about the, this whole, this series as a whole. And it, it feels to me like heroes like Batrider, for example, even though he's been banned out and stuff like that, they're much harder to to play effectively in these types of scenarios when, when Void, Tidehunter, and Shadow Demon, and Oracle are just so prevalent. I mean, yeah, you know, this is a great Batrider player, there's no doubt, but I feel like putting him on that hero in this position is like, it's super hard. And I think that EG might be kicking themselves for that pick because I think a, a Tidehunter would have been way more effective for the kind of strategy that they wanted to play. Which is basically just rush to the map and push as five. Because if you have a tide, there's no initiation on the other team, they can't stop your siege. There's just nothing they can do. But if you have that, there's a lot of room for error. So, we'll have to see. Obviously, he's going to try his best. SC jumps in, looking for Zai. Zai. Greaves, he'll be fine. He's got a hood as well. So, the burst, not too lethal. RTZ pushes them back. I'll pop the Moonlight Shadow and Newbie. Right, he's coming again. We've got to watch KP. He's got that ball ravage, and of course, RTZ still without a BKB. Absolutely, Vizor, they jump in. Arthur gets over the KP with the ravage, hits the ball. There we go again. KP with the double ravage. That's going to be Universe down. He will buy back crit. Force down. He's going to go out. He does not have buyback. EG coming in hard there with the KO offering. They're trying to turn this one around. SC falling low. The protective disruption from Faith. They need to kill this Golem before it kills the Mirana. Mirana's able to get out in time. Newbie survive. They take the racks, they get out, and they may not be done. U9 pops the BKB, the Eclipse, he's coming in for the finishing blow. Zai falling down low, he's gonna drop. RTD, he's gonna fall as well. GG G is called, it's all over. And we're getting ourselves a game four in this best of five series as the score stands two to one for the side of EG in the lead, but Newbie there with that game three win. And it's looking pretty scary. We said that Newbie need to step it up, show us what they kind of showed us the other day again.